Hello, Lazio all over the world. Welcome to another episode of Lazio Lounge. Before we start, happy Easter to everybody that celebrate Easter holidays. But we are not here to talk about what Alazar have eaten in the last two days because we have a lot of things to talk about. Because Saturday it was the debut of Igor Tudor as Lazio manager, and it was Lazio Juventus. A uh, very important game for us. And uh, I know Lazio scored in the last second, Alazar, but if there was a team that deserved to win that game, it was definitely Lazio. We have been unlucky in, in definitely in a lot of circumstances Saturday, and at the end, the better team won. I think. Do you agree with me? Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, I think um, I was really pleasantly surprised. I mean, I, I wouldn't. I'm not. I'm not going to say yet. Yeah, I'm eating humble pie about my doubts about Tudor's appointment because I think we need a bit longer. But certainly, it was far more impressive as a debut than I think we had any right to expect, to be honest. How little time he's had with these players and he's seemingly been able to get them. The way I saw it, we kind of wanted to see three things, which was a different mentality and attitude, um, the, the new tactics in play and how that would work out, and a more attacking style, which he promised. And I thought, you know, even if we see two out of those three things, that's probably a good start. And in the end, I think we saw all of those things. There's obviously still problems with this team. We, I'm sure we'll get on to Tati Castellanos' finishing. But as, as a debut, I don't think it can be much better than that. And even if you had to wait until 10 seconds to go, so in a certain way, that makes it even more special because that, that game will be remembered you know, for that moment, for that euphoria that it creates when you score so late. So I don't think he could have hoped for it to go any better. Let's start from the beginning, because the starting eleven Igor Tudor picked was a huge surprise, right? Pedro starting, Wendozi on the bench. Uh, a lot of surprises. You mentioned Castellanos. Well, there were rumors that Chiro and Luis Alberto should have started. Instead, Igor Tudor surprised everybody. Uh, I don't know, what was the biggest surprise? When Duzi on the bench, Kamada starting, or Pedro starting? I think for me, Gwen Duzi being on the bench, uh, for sure, because, I mean, not only has he been Lazio's best player this season, but uh, Kamada has, has hardly featured this season. So it's not even one of those roles where you're kind of interchangeable. We've seen Tati and Chiro swap positions, um, the Alberto one was more to do with his physical condition, so it wasn't a huge surprise because we had read, you know, in the day before and so on that there was a, a doubt over Alberto. Um, whereas, yeah, benching Guendouzi was a huge surprise. Um, and look, all again, everything seemed to pay off because he brings on the big guns in the last 20 30 minutes. Immobile, Alberto, Guendouzi, they all come onto the pitch, they all keep pressing, and it's Guendouzi who has you know, the vision and the, the technique to actually provide that cross at the end that, that creates the goal. So every decision he made seemed to really work. And I think Kamada as well, he, he justified his selection. I was impressed that playing in that kind of deeper role in a completely new system, he seemed as comfortable as he did. To be honest, I was surprised by all of it. <laughs> I was surprised <laughs> by, by how comfortable everybody looked. And I don't know, I want to ask you something, actually, because I think that there... There is a risk here of falling into the trap of um, maybe overstating how good it was against a really poor Juventus team. But it still was, I think, a very authoritative, impressive last year performance. So where do you think it stands in terms of kind of how poor Juventus were versus how good last year were? Well, obviously, you're right. Juventus is not playing great football. I think in the last nine, they won just one. So this tells you how bad this team is, but they're still third on the table, right? And let's not forget that this bad Juventus have caused so many problems to Lazio in the past. Uh, we lost often at Turin against them. And as Tudor mentioned after the game, we were really concerned about the counter-attack because that's the strength of Juventus. So we were trying to balance a little bit more the team and not push everybody to to score. So I thought, yeah, it's 
And the funny thing is, we're playing against Juventus again to, on Tuesday in Coppa Italia. So it's not that we're going to have a, a, another opponent to see the status of this team. But I thought we played well. And obviously, Juventus is a team that is struggling now. But overall, I was impressed. I didn't expect Lazio playing so well. Uh, you mentioned Kamada. I thought Kamada and Wendouzi, and this is why I was surprised to not see Wendouzi, were in, with Casale, the only players used to this system, right? Uh, Casale played with Tudor in Verona. Wendouzi played with Tudor in Olympique Marseille. And Kamada played with the system when he was in Eintracht Frankfurt. So this was the only three players used to this system. So that's why I was surprised to not see Wendouzi. But I thought... Felipe Anderson and Marusic played an incredible game, not only because Marusic scored, but how they played. So it, it was really encouraging. Then, obviously, we have to mention, as you said at the beginning, Castellanos missed a huge opportunity in the first half. Pedro had a huge opportunity. And I thought Pedro didn't play that well. Probably with his accent there from the start, we could have scored much earlier than the last second of the game. But, I mean, the improvement was massive. You, it looks like it was a completely different team, Alistair, compared to the past, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, in all those respects, like you say, you've, you've, you've identified quite a few of the players there and the performances they've had. I think you, you could really go through the entire team and kind of, there's something interesting to say about almost everyone. I'm not saying we should do that because it would take forever. But, the, the you know, you have to um, remember as well that we had we had Christos Mandas in goal, who's only 22. He's hardly played with this team. So to transform your defence into this hybrid, you know, they, they're calling it a kind of back 3.5 because it's transitioning between three on the ball and four off the ball. But... You know, obviously the organization of the defense so often falls on the goalkeeper and their communication too of pulling everybody around and seeing everything properly. So Mandas himself made a couple of great saves and nobody's even mentioning that guy. Um, I thought Marisic played his best game this season for sure. Probably his best game for much longer than that. I can't really remember the last time I've seen Marisic make such an impact on a game. And he was the one, I guess, who was leading that that hybrid system, that transition, because he's the one who's stepping out of the out of the four to make it a three and getting up and down the pitch. Um, I thought he exemplified more than anyone else this new era has begun because he has looked dreadful this season. He's looked low in confidence. Yeah, he's looked like. He's almost been the symbol of a team that had lost its way, that had lost motivation, that didn't really know what to do. And suddenly, all of a sudden, he's there making that run in the 93rd minute, having been running nonstop the entire game. Um, and to be honest, providing that kind of directness that we needed, because I was getting a bit frustrated at the end by the fact that we were playing a lot in the final third. And I've got some good stats about that I'll get on to later. But we have we have so many players who want to come short. You know, like yeah. if somebody has the ball in the final third, there's about three guys running towards them to take the short ball. And there's hardly anyone who's actually making those runs into the box. And eventually Marisic just thinks, you know, OK, it's going to be me then. Because <laughs> no one else is doing it. So, yeah, fantastic performance from him, I thought. Yeah, another big surprise we have to talk about is the system because everybody was talking he's going to switch to the back three as he ever did in Verona, Olympique Marseille, etc. Uh, so it was a huge surprise. And uh, if you are watching us on, uh, on uh, a podcast, switch to our YouTube channel because I have here the average position of Lazio uh, in Lazio Juventus. Uh, this is Lazio defending Alistair. And you can easily see that we are playing with a back four with Gila moving to the left back, Marzic right back, and uh, Casale Romagnoli playing a center defender. And we are playing a sort of 4 4 2, I would say, with uh, yeah. Marzic playing at right back, which was a surprise. We didn't expect this type of system. We were expecting a three man defense. And then when Lazio get the ball, 
we were switching, let me get it, to a <laughs> three-man defense with Romagnoli at the center, uh, Casale moving on the on the right, and Hila pushing on the left, and Marusic becoming a sort of winger, and uh, Felipe Anderson pushing. So we had a sort of three, 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 one, I would call it, with the uh, with Castellanos our central uh, attacker. So I thought this caught by surprise a little bit Juventus also uh, all our fans but it was really interesting to see to see Lazio finally uh changing depending on uh, the ball possession yeah and a enormous change from what we were under Sari which was always the same you know completely inflexible in terms of the 4-3-3 and yeah there's flexibility around what you can do with the 4-3-3 I get that but this is flexibility to a new, totally new level that I had my main doubts about, to be honest, was, was both how you how you re-coach this team mid-season to do this, and secondly, if we've got the players who can do this. Um, and I think I was wrong on both fronts because the first thing, he, he clearly has coached, re-coached this team to do this because it was... They did look organized, Vittorio. I mean, okay, yeah, Juventus weren't interested in particularly pressing Lazio. They they were going to allow Lazio to kind of have the time to, to do this, which I don't think every team will. But even so, they did look organized. Everyone did kind of seem like they knew what to do. There were a couple of wobbly moments, I would say. I'm definitely not convinced by the left-hand side defensively yeah. Yeah. with Zakanyi being asked to do... The defensive side there and and Gila kind of I mean Gila had some amazing moments but we left a lot of space in behind during that game that Juventus just weren't good enough at exploiting but other teams would be so I don't think it's the finished article but in terms of what you're talking about there that transition between phases I thought that was so impressive how quickly they managed to bring that in yes the thing is as you were mentioning I don't think we have all the right players to do this on the right side perfect we have Marzic we have Felipe Anderson we have to talk about Felipe Anderson because I had a great great game but on the other side I think Hila can play there and he's suited for that position I think Zakani it's the the issue there and Pedro playing more centrally he has to run less than he had with Sarri but I don't know if he's the right guy there and at the same time, is Luis Alberto going to be able to defend instead of Zaccagni or Isaacsen do that, that thing? So definitely there are some problems there. But on the right side, we can be really, really dangerous, right? Uh, seeing this team attacking on that side, we put a lot of pressure to, to Juventus. And it was also important to see how Cataldi and Camada played because they helped a lot. Uh, mm. both ways, defending and attacking. So I thought that was very important for us. Um, again, we have to see if this is going to be the system going forward or it was just uh, to play against Juventus and uh, to help the other players adapt to the scheme. But it was really interesting, Alisson. I thought that was uh, the first time we saw Lazio playing so a uh, fluid type of football and it worked, right? Yeah, and I think the second thing I'd want to talk about uh, tactically was that, you know, another thing that Tudor had talked about was the fact that he's wanting to get more numbers forwards and he is wanting to play a kind of braver, bolder style of football, which I think Lazio fans are certainly crying out for by this stage after a season where we've averaged about one goal a game just over. Um, the finishing has been dreadful, but also the the chances haven't exactly been flooding in every week either. And I think we did see that as well. I mean, firstly, with the, the system he's got, that actually allows you to have Castellanos, Anderson, Zaccagni and Pedro all in the same starting lineup, which would never have happened before. It'd be three out of four. So that in itself gives you an extra technical attacking player in the final third to be able to... To, well, to be able to create, to be able to finish. And 
I saw this statistic on the on the Serie A website when I was writing an article earlier. The Lazio made 171 passes in the final third um, last night. Sorry, in Saturday night in this match. Now, in comparison, I look back at the last five games. It's more than any of the previous five games, but compared to the matches against Milan and Fiorentina, which I guess you would say are the other big games we've had recently, in those two matches, we had around 30 passes and around 50 passes in the final third. Yeah, see, you can see it there, 171. So it is an enormous difference. And again, part part of that is going to be Juventus and how deep they sat, how much they were willing to concede possession to Lazio, how negative they played. But that we're talking about a difference of, you know, this being three or four times more than, than what we've uh, been getting in re that recently. So that that is a, a huge difference. And OK, yeah, we still saw the same problem, Vittorio, which is that even with that pressure, that final third pressure, even with the 16 shots we had, only four of them are hitting the target and it takes the 93rd minute to score the goal. So that that is a problem that Tudor, I don't think, can solve by himself. What do you think? Like you, he can get this team into positions to score into more dangerous positions of the pitch, but he isn't able to get that ball into the net on his own. He's going to need their help, and he didn't get that last night until the end. No, this is a problem. Uh, but there's another thing I want to show you that it's really important. Uh, we talk about occupying the box right we said with Sarri we had not enough players in the box and uh, we often see Chiro all alone maybe Chiro and Zaccagni there etc so this was one of our biggest problems if you see on the Serie A you can see that Gila had two shots on target Romagnoli had two shots Casale one shot Felipe Anderson two Kamada two so finally our defenders shot on target the funny thing also is that if we add Gila, Romagnoli, Casale they had more shot on target than they are our attackers because Castellano had three Luis Alberto one Immobile, Isaac, Zaccagni, Pedro none so yeah. our defender shot on target more than Immobile, than Immobile Pedro etc etc which is not good right Definitely, we had the help from our defender, which is good. And the fact that Marosi's score is not a coincidence. But at the end of the day, our number nine had to score, have to shot on target more. And this is what we are lacking. And we've been lacking with Sarri and with uh, Tudor. Now, with Tudor, our defender are moving forward and we are creating more chance. They are finishing more chance. This is definitely positive. But we need help from our wingers, right? Our attackers too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, add, adding that new dynamic is going to help for sure. And it was kind of surprising at times last night, wasn't it? Especially that moment in the second half where there was a through ball and suddenly, you know, there's a Lazio player who's through on goal and you think, oh, here we go. And I was like, God, he, he's big. <laughs> who's this? And it's, it's Nicolo Casale who's running through on goal. And you're like, How, what is he doing there? Um, I mean, fair play to him. And, you know, they're obviously being given the encouragement to do that, you know, to to follow those, um, to, to follow that momentum upfield when they need to. And we know Gila likes to do that anyway. And, and he's pretty good at that. Um, I think that in the long run, that, that should pay off for the team. I, I think it's going to take them a while to to move on from the way they were attacking before, though. You know, I think we saw that again the second half when it got to the final, I thought, 20, 30 minutes or so, and Juventus are deep. And by then, you've had an hour of kind of trying and failing to find the gaps or, you know, they created some good chances, but they hadn't quite tested Chesney enough. They hadn't quite... Um, got the chances at where you thought they should be, you know, winning this game by a goal or two by now. And it resulted in this period where all they seemed to have left in the locker was passing it around at the edge of the box and taking shots from long range. And that was kind of what Juve wanted them to do, I think. So I do think there's still a lack of penetration there, um, which is what I liked so much about that Marisic run. 
because I don't think um, it was like Milinkovic Savic almost, you know, that he used to love doing those kind of runs and the, the size of the guy meant that he was hard to stop if he went for it. So I think we need to find a way of encouraging a bit more of that in my mind, a bit more penetration, a few more kind of dangerous runs, if if not just open up a bit of space, if they're not necessarily always throwing balls in the box. Um because that seems yeah. to be missing. There's so many players at the edge of the box wanting to take shots, and you're just kind of like, you don't need a queue of four guys there. You can <laughs> someone move inside. Yeah, but I mean, we have to also say that it's not easy when a team defends with 11 players in their box. It's difficult, right? Nobody yeah. would expect Juventus to have 10 men on the edge of the box. That's incredible. And it's also embarrassing from my point of view but obviously it, it, it's difficult you know if it's it was easy to score against Lazio because we were trying to attack with a lot of players and obviously counter-attack was easy for our opponent when you play Juventus with Chiesa playing on the edge of the penalty box and uh, Ken there it, it's it's difficult to create we have to move the ball faster this is the issue we always had and I fear that with Luis Alberto coming in, we slowed a little bit too much moving the ball. And this is something we have to work out. But yeah, I think we have to give credit to Juventus. They, they defend so deep and with every single player they had that it wasn't easy to score. Uh, so, and you know where I'm going. Let, uh, I mean, we had a huge chance. There was an incredible penalty for us. At the, in the second half I mean that would have changed the game I don't know because Chesney is a very good uh, keeper when it's up to penalties we saw it even with the national team but still it's a penalty you have a huge chance to score it right is that you taking a little dig at our Welsh listeners there <laughs> <laughs> well no Chesney is very good He's how many penalties did he take this season yeah well no, I mean, in, in general, I liked, I thought the referee did a pretty good job because the game didn't, it wasn't a particularly bitty game. It wasn't full of cards. It wasn't full of fouls. And I quite liked that about it. But you're right. I think, to be honest, that was more on the VAR for me than on the ref. Because if something like that happens off the ball, he can't see absolutely everything. And if he was looking somewhere else, then he can't pretend he saw it. So it's up to them to call him over to look at it. Um. But yeah, I mean, look, I think, uh, I, th I think in a way, I don't know, you, maybe you disagree, but it, it, in a certain way, I mean, well, look, there's no way around this. Tudor's first week in the job is a bit of a nightmare because he's got Juventus twice and then the Rome Derby. I mean, there is no harder way to start. But if you want to look at it a different way, playing Juve twice in a row is actually quite useful, certainly as a barometer of where this team is and how much uh, of what we're seeing we can kind of see as fact or not we'll kind of know that by the end of of tuesday night because if you're playing the same team twice and lots who get better or improve on that performance or they solidify what they did on on saturday night we'll know that it's for real you know that there's not going to be the same element of surprise um that you mentioned perhaps allegri was surprised i mean juve allegri himself changed formation to to a 4-3-3 which I mean, was was a little bit surprising and <laughs> on its own, but I think playing the same team twice in a row will give us quite a useful little sample size of where this team is at, comparing the two games against the same opponent against one another. Yeah, Juventus played with a 4-3-3, but look in the second half where the heat map of Juventus is. They were in, a, in their penalty box. Come on. <laughs> So they're all in Chesney's shorts. I mean, that's embarrassing. It's you, Andrews. <laughs> Come on. And, and it's not that in the first half they say they were attacking. They were in their middle, in their half. So it's terrible. If you check Lazio, oh, it's it's a completely different uh, situation. So, yeah. Um, obviously, this Juventus is not a huge team. It's still Juventus. I think they have decent players. They have very good players and again looking here you can say that they were playing with a 4-3-3 but it wasn't you know it was more a 4-5-1 yeah 
Well, yeah, that's the thing. It can so easily be become four or five one, can it? Um, it, it was probably the most defensive 4-3-3 we ever saw. I mean, yeah. Mazzani would have been proud of that, right? But they do have the players to hurt. That's the thing. I mean, okay, they didn't have Lovic, um the other night, which is a big loss for them. They didn't have uh, Milik, who would normally be his number two. They didn't have Kostic, who's playing almost every game for them. So that's quite a lot of pain. But even so, between Chiesa, Cambiazzo, Yildiz, all these guys, they've got enough, certainly, to... I, I, I think there was a lot of space Lazio left to attack. For a team that was a good counter-attacking team, they could have could have made a lot of uh, progress against the space Lazio were leaving. But then again, I think Lazio probably got to a point in that match where they were happy to leave that space. And we shouldn't, you know, judge them negatively on that because they saw the way you were playing and they thought, that's fine. We can leave that there and we'll deal with it. And also, at this moment, allow me to bring up Mario Gila's Alessandro Nesta moment because talking about leaving space in behind, there is huge space for Moise Ken. And Gila starts, what, 10 meters away from him? And <laughs> sprints half the length of the pitch and makes this elegant, perfect slide tackle, takes the ball off his toes, plays the pass to, an, to a teammate. I mean, I mean, he, he had a great performance all around, but that's become almost viral, that moment, and it's summed up this transformation of this guy this season. It's incredible. Yeah, the, the, the stadium was collapsing. I mean, everybody <laughs> was so happy about that. And let's be calm. No comparison with Nesta. Uh, <laughs> it's just one season. Let's give him time. But he's young. He's talented. Um, he's not afraid of doing this type of tackles. He's very good with the ball on his feet. And I think he's the type of player that will shine more with, with Tudor rather than with Sarri. Especially if he plays on the left back. We have space and room to, to go forward. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see them, him de develop with uh, Tudor. Now, the, the problem, Alasar, is Marusic, Felipe Anderson, Gila, probably Lazzari, Kamada. Those are the type of players that can adapt to this very fluid type of football. But Luis Alberto, Zaccagni, Pedro, just to mention a few, those are the players that I see struggling in the system and uh, I don't know, do we have that many options to continue? It, it's the end of the season, but we are playing Tuesday against Juventus and then Saturday in the Derby. Uh, we'll need to rotate, and that's where I'm concerned, right? Do we have that many players that can adapt to Tudor, or it will be Tudor adapting to these players available? Yeah, I mean, it has to be a bit of both, doesn't it? Because... It's it's all good and well for Tudor to have his ideas, but he also he does have to see what the squad has available to him because you know I think there is a big problem in that defense in just in the there's no depth. So if you are, uh, uh, I mean I've been complaining about this all season the the fact that there's only four centre backs. Um, we we kind of got lucky, to be honest with Gila, because at the start of the season, nobody, including the club, knew he was as good as he's become. I mean, I'm not going to accept that they knew this would happen because he wasn't getting anywhere near the team for so long. And now that we're, we have a back three and Patrick is having all these fitness issues, I, I just I think you're a couple of injuries away from a really big problem there. And the fullbacks we've got, Hisai, Lazzari, I mean, Marisic could probably step in there. Um, he did yeah. that once or yeah. twice under Inzaghi. But I just, I think it's, uh, it, I really like the system and the ideas behind it and all that. I just think in that centre-back, wing-back, um, this was my, my point before this game. Like, I just don't think we got the players. Um, I mean, you're talking about the attacking end of the pitch, and I'm talking about defensive end. So clearly, there are some doubts about what can, yeah, what can be done. Yeah, but I mean, thinking about what Felipe Anderson did on Saturday, I don't believe 
Zaccagni or Luis Alberto can do the same on the other side. So, you know, that, that's where we, we can struggle. And I forgot to mention Isai, but Isai is another problem. Can Isai play that hybrid uh, position that Marzic did? I'm not sure. We'll have to test him. Uh, but you mentioned it at the beginning of this podcast. We have to talk about Tadi Castellano because, unfortunately, Lazio is not playing every game against Frosinone. And without Frosinone, he's just one goal in I don't know how many games. And I saw it more than once. The opportunity he had in the first half, the one that Felipe Alderson made an unbelievable assist, he was 1v1 against Chesney. You have to hit the post. I mean, if Chesney saves it, great save from the goalkeeper. But put it wide from there, it's not acceptable at that level. No, I mean, I thought both both of those chances, yeah, you've got to got to test the keeper at least. And I don't know, maybe he's going, yeah, just wants, wants to put it right in the corner. The thing is, the first one especially, he wasn't even close. That was the crazy thing about that finish was I look, when you look at the reverse replay and it was, you know, a good meter or meter yeah. and a half wide, I mean... Uh, he doesn't have that in, that killer instinct, and we know that. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily going to come. I think he's got other assets that make him a useful player. Um, but certainly we know he's not someone we can rely on to, to, to be the provider of goals in this team. Uh, is Chiro the one we can rely on? Well, he has been for years and years. And we know that more than anyone in Lazio history, he's been someone we can rely on. But there's no getting around the fact that he's got older, he's had more fitness problems, and his form hasn't been at the level it's been in previous years. There's just no other way of looking at that. So like you said before, I think it has to be... Um, with this new um, strategy, with this new formation, it has to be more of a team effort. And there's more opportunity for it to be a team effort because like you were pointing out if the defenders are getting forward more into shooting positions if the midfielders are able to come out more and get find more space and if we've got four attacking players on the pitch at once there's not there hopefully isn't as much pressure on the number nine to be the guy who's scoring the goals because i think the four three three spearheaded by a number nine he's always the guy yeah. you're looking to really because he's generally at the end of the chances yeah, especially in the Sari one where the position are pretty much locked. And we don't talk a lot about transfer market, but I want to bring it up because we just mentioned that Castellano doesn't score that much. Rumors are that Lazio is thinking to sign Giovanni Simeone. We are talking about another player who doesn't score very often. And if Chiro leaves and you replace Chiro with the Simeone, I think the problem is going to get worse instead of getting better. Uh, Castellano scores only against Frosinone, and if Frosinone gets relegated, he won't score a single goal next year. And Simeone is a player who, I think, once in his career scored more than 10 goals in a, in a season. So he's not going to fix the problem, right? I, don't, I would love to have a Simeone back with the Lazio shirt, but I don't think it's the solution. Well, I really like the idea. I think it was two years ago when we were talking about the, you know, the, who the Vice Mobile is going to be and having our, our annual discussion around that. And uh, at that point, you know, when, when Simeone was, was going so well with Verona, um, he seemed like a great fit because he seemed like someone who could be a good deputy, who could be happy to be the number two and take his chance, had the right kind of attitude. He had Serie A experience. He'd scored a lot of goals for Verona. Um, but yeah, I think the doubts do creep in when you've seen him go and fulfill that role at Napoli for, yeah. for two seasons and fail to do it and actually even fall down. He's not the deputy Tazi men now so much as the third choice behind Raspadori as well. So uh, he's not the star he once was in that regard. But then again, would you be able to get him for cheap? That's probably what Lotito is thinking of that one. Yeah, but I mean, was... I, I think you're right. But, but in terms of the what you're talking about, like finding a striker in the Mercato is going to solve this problem. I mean, there's no way around it, Vittorio, to, to find that. You're going to have to spend a lot of money, to, to be sure. 
Yeah, but to be honest, 80 million euros for Simeone, that's a robbery, right? I mean, if well, we sign... Much for the <laughs> I mean, yeah. this is the thing. Think about that, it. That's what you get for, what was he, 13, 15 or something. And that's, that's what you get for that. So, um, yeah, I think that with strikers particularly, you do have to overpay, really if you want anything resembling a guarantee of goals. And it makes you realize how lucky we've been with Giro, getting him when we did for the deal we did. Yeah, um, yeah. Talk, talking about transfer market, et cetera, do you think the game of Saturday increased the chances of re-signing Felipe Anderson? Because I never heard a manager talking so highly uh, and positive about a player like Tudor did with Felipe Anderson after the game. Yeah. Do you think that was a signal, yeah. like Tudor saying to Lodito, hey, we have to keep this player? I, I, so I, I went into the press conference after the match and I, I was a wee bit late, but I got in just as someone was about to ask this question. And it was weirdly immediate because as soon as the question came out, he seemed to, he seemed to have the answer ready. You know, he was, he was right on top of it. And I can I, I imagine after being here for a week or two weeks, however long it's been, he can already see how important Anderson is because it's such an asset to have a player with his combination of, I guess, technique and intelligence and work rate. And, you know, he called him the complete player. And I think Sari, as soon as he came in at last show, was talking about how Felipe Anderson's one of the best players he's ever coached in his whole career. So coaches can see what this guy's got. And I imagine Tudor, especially with the system he wants to bring in and what we're just talking about, not really having the right players. He can, and I imagine he can very immediately see the importance of that. It, is it going to be enough to, to change Anderson's mind or to get him to stay? I don't know. I think... The rest, do you think the rest of the season might dictate that a little bit? Because whether we end up in, I don't know, the Conference League or the Champions League or the Europa League or nowhere, um, it's, it's just really hard to say what kind of a future Anderson sees. Because I think for all of us, we don't really know what the future holds either at this point. Yeah, I would... Uh... It's still possible, but I see it pretty much difficult to see Lazio finishing in the top four or five. So difficult to see us in the Champions League. But I think we have another chance now to finish in the Europe League at least. So that should be our, our goal. And, um, you know, uh, Felipe Anderson was asking for a lot of money, but even Juventus is not willing to pay that much. So I don't know. Um, I think with Tudor coming in, a lot of things can change. We can make the same discussion about Kamada, right? Uh, people were, were convinced that he would leave the club at the end of the season. Now he suddenly starts in a critical game like Lazio Juventus. He played really well. Uh, he nearly played all the games. So even the future of Kamada can change. And I think Kamada is a very good player. And as Tudor mentioned, he can play even forward. You know, he can play behind a, a number nine. And the other thing incredible is Felipe Anderson played a great match as, I don't know how you want to call it, right back or um, right winger, etc. Last year, he played center forward and he played well as, 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 as he did yesterday, Saturday. I think he can play goal if he wanted to. So he's such a commodity to have, right? He can play everywhere. And so that's another very important, especially in this type of football, very fluid, where position can change so often. You need to get more and more those type of players that can play in different positions, rather than, I don't know, uh, number nine that can play only there, and uh, that's it. And if anything underlines that, it's this, isn't it? It's going from Sari Ball to Tudor Ball, from 4-3-3 to 3-4-2-1 and hybrid system and and he pretty much is just on the level isn't he, he just he, he's still putting that consistency in there and he has been consistent that's the amazing thing is that 
has been the biggest um, criticism of him throughout his career has been inconsistency. And okay, he doesn't light games up with that kind of Brazilian flair in the way that he did the first time he was at Lazio, where it was all about the kind of trickery and the goals and incredible stuff he was doing. Um, it's not really about that so much now as just being steadily important. I guess he he can probably see how important he is to the team. And, and so I think that, that might help. Um, I think the club's should put proper money towards him if that is a part of the issue because if you like we're just talking about in terms of investment in the transfer market you're going to end up spending a hell of a lot more yeah trying to replace a guy like that and having no guarantees than you are bumping up his salary by however many million per year because it's still worth doing in my mind just to have someone that important there especially given you're, we're about to go into a market where with tudor we're going to have to be doing a lot of business. And like I said in the last podcast, I just I don't really trust the club to to do it properly. So um yeah, it's it's an interesting one. With Kamada as well, I think the it's a numbers game with Kamada too, because in terms of convincing him to stay at the club, previously he would look at the 433. There was only one position he was going to play there, was which was as a med sala. But Alberto was going to start every game he played basically. And so there was only one position for him to fight for. Guendouzi pretty quickly nailed that down. Whereas now you look at this team and it seems like there's four positions there for him on the pitch, either the two centre mids or the two attacking mids. So it's just a numbers game. And he'll be like, well, my chances of playing more regularly have just in increased by 400% by having yeah. this new coach given. Yeah. And uh, again, players getting more opportunity like... Felipe Anderson and uh, and uh, Kamada. We have to see what the future holds for Chiro and uh, Luis Alberto. I think Chiro is going to start against Juventus, especially seeing how Castellanos have performed Saturday. But for Luis Alberto, I think it's a different situation. I think Luis Alberto is probably the player who uh, will struggle more in the changing of system uh, because I don't think he has the pace good enough for this type of football but again it's very very early to say all this right Alison we have to see what's gonna happen Tuesday if Tudor is gonna change things I hope Gwendozi will finally start but again if Gwendozi starts who gets out of the squad Kamada uh, or Cataldi you know there are a lot of question marks and uh, Tudor didn't answer this question so we're going to see it directly on the pitch but as a debut to wrap it up Alistair, uh it was encouraging i was concerned that you know first game with not that many uh training session especially for the players coming back from the national team i was concerned that we could see issue uh mistakes and things like that instead it was a pretty tidy game a good performance from a lot of players so it was really encouraging. It was. And like I said before, I don't I don't think we need to get too carried away. I think let's see how this week goes because events will be a lot better prepared for this second time around. They should be at least. It's obviously in their place rather than in our place. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And there's no getting around the fact that this derby is against a Roma side that's going to be in much better form. Um so, you know, it is really difficult as a start and a degree of patience is required, even if the rest of this week doesn't go brilliantly. But uh, this win has at least given us a blueprint, hasn't it? It's given us a sketch, an idea of exactly what he wants, how he wants things to look. And it gives us a, a vision of that, which is really useful in, in the debut game. So, yeah, mass and it is a massive three points as well, because if just looking at the table and getting above Napoli as a result... Um, you know, that that's still, that's it, let's not forget about Serie A, you know, it's quite easy to just almost leave it, but there are still European positions there to be taken. No, absolutely. And uh, I think we have the chance to fight in Coppa Italia and uh, in Serie A. We still, for me, we could, still can finish in Europe League, especially seeing how Fiorentina, Napoli, etc. are performing. Uh, Bologna is a different matter, 
Same thing with Atalanta, I think. But the other teams are... On, Lazio can, can play better than these teams and finish above them. And then there is the Coppa Italia. You know, reaching the final would be uh, a good result. And it's not impossible seeing how Juventus, even though Alasa and want to finish it here, unfortunately, in Turin, Lazio always played poorly. Uh, never, I don't know if it was lack of personality, but we never played as we uh, should expect the team to play. You know, Saturday, we dominated the game. But if we go back to the first leg uh, away, we didn't play that well. And this was the same thing last year and the year before, right? So it's like that we're lacking of personality when we're playing away. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's that's a big test as well of, of this big early test for Chido as well, because it's, it's the... Um, combination of two things he struggled with, which is the away games against big teams, and then obviously the quick turnaround of three days to four days, which Sadi was always complaining about too. So, <laughs> you know, it's it's going to be another test of what kind of an impact he's made and and how he can get inside the head of these players, because I thought it was really encouraging seeing the goal with 10 seconds to go. It's not something we've seen a lot of uh, since Caicedo left. <laughs> Um, and this this team's mentality perhaps has been a part of that. Very few comebacks, you know, going behind always destroys this team. And yeah. But the first game, okay, didn't go behind, but still staying in it and staying in the fight and pushing for that goal right into the last second was, was a good sign. So, yeah, let's see what happens in Turin. Yeah, crossing fingers. Thanks again. I'm sorry we've been a little bit long, but there were so many things to talk about. And we didn't mention that the... Marzic goal remind me a lot about the Provedel goal against Atletico Madrid. So, a lot of things to talk about. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks, everybody. If you want, on the YouTube channel, you have the video about what we talk about. So, if you didn't subscribe to our YouTube channel, please do. And we're going to be back probably after the derby. Uh, take care, guys. Thanks, Alizer. Uh, see you next time. Ciao.